Okay, so here we have a 2003 GL1800 Goldwing in orange. This is the non-ABS model. We're doing a full part out. So I'm going to do the walk around. You can hear the engine running and then we're going to take it for a spin. We'll start her up. So just under 80,000 miles, 79,480. Start her up. Looks like we got ISO grips on it, extra chrome trim on the fairing. This one's equipped with the CB. It's got the luggage rack and the spoiler. I know you Goldwing guys really like doing that. Same chrome trim on the trunk and the bags. Trailer hitch. Utopia backrest. It has the brake rotor covers with the LED lights, and here's them working. So I can't do too much with the radio. I'm going to verify that it works, but uh, I'll get a copyright strike if I let too much music play. Radio works. Now we're going to do the CB. So I don't have a headset. So I can't uh, do much with the CB other than show you that it works. I can change the channels. I can transmit. So the CB radio definitely works. I just can't talk to anybody on it. Let's go for a spin. These things are nice and quiet, powerful. I've had six or seven of them now. The bike is just under 20 years old and still very good looking, very contemporary, very low center of gravity. So the handling's outstanding. I've been driving this thing for a couple of days. And you're gonna see that there aren't any shifting problems. People get these ghost shifts or these things drop out of gear because they have a bent shifting fork. Usually that happens from installing the heel toe shifter, which this one is not equipped with. It's a little bit chilly, just under 50 degrees here at the beginning of March. But I can't really hold off for better weather. We've got bills to pay. I 
I've got to ride with the radio off because uh, YouTube will give me a copyright strike. So I'll probably add in some uh, royalty free music during post processing. You can see I've got no FI light, which is your fault indicator from your computer, ECU or ECM, whichever they want to call it. So this is a known good ECM if you've got ECM problems. So this ECM will be for sale on eBay within the next week. Very smooth shifting. We're going to go ahead and uh, test the cruise control, cruise is set. So there the cruise is working. I've got uh, both hands off the handlebars now, 70 mile an hour highway speed, and there's no wobble or anything. So uh, I don't know whether the steering neck bearings have been upgraded in this thing. Uh, that steering neck wobble is very common on these years and I usually put all balls tapered steering neck bearings in but it looks like this one in particular isn't due for that whether it was already done or whether the stock bearings are just in great shape of course it's not gonna matter I'm parting this bike out so uh, nobody buys used um, steering neck bearings that would be nuts this windshield is shot uh, I don't know whether somebody used Windex on it or what they've done but it's got all kinds of crazing and scratches and marks and uh, it's just going to go straight in the trash this windshield is, is worthless you really want to use a cleaner for plastics and even better if you use one that's specially formulated for motorcycle windshields They're not very expensive. I, I would say an aftermarket windshield for a Goldwing comes in under $200. And I've gotten some really cheap ones, 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, but the optics aren't great. Uh, they look good, but when you're looking through them, your view is a bit distorted. So I probably won't ever buy a super cheap windshield again. Uh, you really want to just take good care of them because you don't really want to spend a couple hundred bucks every few months just because you don't know how to clean your windshield. towards Clinton and I'll probably speed the tape up for part of the drive but we're just going to take a nice little drive through the country we're cruising along at 80 it's just effortless be really easy to get a speeding ticket on a bright orange rocket ship like this
small town of Lyford. We're coming up on the Lyford Y. This is one of those tiny towns where if you blink, you miss it. These 1800 Gold Wings are nuts, even for a 20 year old bike. The Pancake 6 engine, it has a power curve that reminds me a lot of my R1. Except the R1, it had a lot of vibration and it was really just kind of brutal. Whereas this has gobs and gobs of power, but it's a lot more refined. But it still reminds me a whole lot more of a sport bike than a big cruiser or a touring bike, which of course it is. Uh, it's an incredible touring bike, upright riding position, which is the known best riding position for long distance. I wish the, uh, you know, I'm really tall and my knees are forward of my feet right now, so I do upholstery work and I'll probably uh, modify this seat for a YouTube video and I'll probably set the driving position back a couple of inches just because I'm really tall but that doesn't mean this is an uncomfortable bike I just feel like I'd be a, a more comfortable if my knees weren't forward of my feet and I was just more upright I do like the stock handlebars though. I had one of these with Healy bars, which are infinitely adjustable handlebars. They're about $1,500. And I already knew I liked the stock bars and they look a lot cleaner. So of course I took those bars off and sold them on eBay as I do. And I stuck with the stock ones. I can tell you though that I don't really care for these uh, ISO grips. Curiaken, I think, is what the brand is called. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. They look nice if you like a lot of chrome on your bike, but on a touring bike, I just like the good old fashioned cheap foam grips. They're a lot more comfortable. Even the stock grips are more comfortable than the ISO grips for my personal taste. You know, whatever you like is what you like. So we're crossing the Wabash River now and into the small town of Clinton. And I've got a couple of friends that live here in Clinton. Hey, RJ. Hey, Alan. Uh, Clinton has a history of Italian culture. So they have the Little Italy Festival here every year. It's of interest and I've been a couple of times and had a good time. It's not near and dear to my heart um, just because I'm Scotch-Irish. But you can see the Italian colors on that awning back there. And they also like to shut down the city streets once a year and have this wild go-kart race right through the city. So you'll want to watch for that. But we're just going to go right through town here and then hit 63 and head back to Terre Haute. There's my buddy RJ's house there. to see if I can make a complete stop without putting my feet down. Fun.
shifts great. I don't feel any wear in the final drive. I had one of these that had over 130,000 miles. And there wasn't anything wrong with that bike either. It, it drove great. But I could just feel in your hands and in your seat, you could feel that the final drive gears had some wear. I don't, I don't really know how to describe it except for, you know, after 20 years and many, many, many motorcycles and also being an industrial technician and having worked on a bunch of gearboxes and things, you just kind of develop a feel and you just knew that's what it was. Now that bike probably would have gone another 100,000 miles. But I could just tell that the uh, the final drive was a lot more worn. This one's fantastic. Fingers are getting a little bit numb. These gloves aren't insulated. I never did like these uh, Mickey Mouse mirrors on here. They look like car mirrors. I call them Mickey Mouse mirrors. They remind me of Mickey Mouse ears. Even, I know they're not perfectly round, but I think you get it. But I do think that that's part of the genius of this design. Your hands are almost completely tucked behind the mirrors. So you don't really get hardly any wind on your hands. I see people adding a bunch of extra wind deflectors hanging under the mirrors and I get all kinds of bikes that have that stuff. And, um, that's not to my taste. I, I don't really like a bunch of extra stuff hanging off the bike visually and also I grew up riding uh, big cruisers and without any windshield at all usually because they just look cooler. And so these gold wings just have a ton of coverage to block you from the wind. And you can actually unlatch the windshield here and raise it up even higher. Uh, I won't do that, but uh, I, I tend to look over the top a little bit, especially when the windshield is as, as poor a shape as this one is. But, you know, uh, for, what it, for what I'm used to, this full fairing motorcycle has a ton of coverage to block the wind and I don't feel like they need any extra. Uh, you know, if you feel otherwise, then, you know, you do whatever you want to your bike. I don't really care. Uh, the only reason that really bothers me personally at all, what you might do to your bike, is uh, people drill a bunch of holes to mount things and then the parts they drilled the holes in aren't worth anything. But I don't take it personal. You know, I do uh, tons of custom things to my own bike that I'm sure reduce the resale value and, and I don't worry about it. it. It's my bike, I'll do what I want, you know, and you should do the same. 